Now you can have your very own good guy doll. Right, Oscar? Hi, I'm Oscar, and I'm your friend to the end. Tidy ho! <laughs> wow! By day, children imagine and pretend, but by night, they have the darkest imaginations in the world. I wanted to write something that was a dark, satirical look about the world of children's marketing. Chucky is a doll. He's made of plastic and stuffing. Now, you don't really think that Chucky is alive, do you? It was really fun to make it something dark and evil. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? <laughs> This was in the mid-80s, 1985, and I was a junior at UCLA. Like any horror fan, I had seen The Talking Tina, Twilight Zone, and I was a fan of that killer doll concept, but it occurred to me that that had never been done in such a way where you could treat the doll as a full-fledged character. Hi, it's me, Chucky. What do you think? I had been in London with my wife, and I had read a book called The Victorian Dollhouse Murders because I was fascinated by dolls. They scared me. And I said to uh, the woman that was running development for me at the time uh, that I would love to do something with dolls. And she said that there was a script about six months ago called Blood Buddy, written by a young, talented writer, but it had not sold. My title for the original script first was Batteries Not Included. And then my agent said, well, we've got to change the title because Steven Spielberg is developing a movie called Batteries Not Included. So then we changed it to Blood Buddy. David read the script and liked it, and he bought it. I think everybody was pretty shocked that this was what I wanted to do next. I had started off as an illustrator for Jim Henson, and then I did an American Tale. Disney had just signed me to a deal and thought that I would do family entertainment and animation for them. The first project that I bring to them is this project that would become Child's Play. In my original script, a doll is actually a sort of supernatural manifestation of the boy's id. So the doll is specifically going out and striking out against the people that this kid feels this unexpressed rage toward. One of the features of the dolls that didn't make it to the final film is that they have synthetic blood in them so that if you play with a doll too roughly, the latex skin will break and then it will start to bleed and then you have to go out and buy band-aids. In a rite of brotherhood, the little boy cuts his thumb and the doll's thumb and mixes their blood together and it's after that that the doll comes to life. It's what I always call the Frankenstein moment. What, what brings something to life? And Don's Frankenstein moment was the idea of the blood ritual. I really did like the idea of the story, but there were elements to me that were missing. But what was very important to me was to really give more of a specific to the central villain of the story. Hello, Andy. The first thing that happened was David attached Tom Holland to the project. Tom Holland had written and directed Fright Night, and that was really good. So, you know, I was very excited. For a long time, one of the most frightening memories I had was as a small boy being afraid of my toys. Then there's been all the publicity recently on these new animatronic dolls, and the idea of writing a story about a little six-year-old boy who insists his doll is alive, I thought was fascinating. Tom went off and rewrote it, and then they brought in a writer named John LaFia. When I got hired to do it, I went to Toys R Us, and I spent a whole afternoon there looking at all the dolls and all the ones that could talk to really see how many things could they say. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Heidi ho <laughs> There were some significant changes um, between my original script and the final version of the movie. In my original script, The Mom, I had her as the advertising executive, who's sort of the mastermind behind the whole campaign, because I just thought that that made the satire of that world a little more pointed. For our director and uh, the other writer, uh, John Lafia, the idea of her being a single mother that was struggling was very important because she couldn't afford to buy the doll. That was important, that she was recently divorced, the kid was having issues because of that. And we don't know, is this kid unhinged? Chucky, I know who is on the kitchen counter. Andy. Who, 
Andy? Who? Chucky! Your doll? I felt that there needed to be more of a backstory with something malevolent that would possess this doll to be so evil, and that was the, the soul of the serial killer. And the history was that he was the Lakeshore Strangler. Fundamentally, the biggest changes was really the addition of voodoo. Tom Holland felt that the character of Charles Lee Ray had a fascination with voodoo and that at the moment of death, he would pass his soul into this doll. Chucky goes to his voodoo instructor. Your own personal mojo, Doc. Give me that. And I just thought, well, that's a whole other kind of magic that's going on in this movie. So it's like, well, if he has a voodoo doll of this guy, why can't he make voodoo dolls of all the other people he wants to kill? For that matter, as a serial killer, you know, why not make voodoo dolls of all your victims? And it's just, it's probably, I don't know, maybe an occupational hazard. Probably best not to think about it too much. But um, uh, anyway, I find it kind of hilarious. Well, John, it's been fun, but I gotta go. I have a date with a six-year-old boy. And you have a date with death. It was very exciting because there were a lot of studios that were interested in this concept. A man named Tony Thomopoulos that was head of MGM UA came out to my office and convinced me why they would be the right studio to make this film. And he also said to me, I want you to not only come make this film there, but come make many films. And I want it to be a place that not only you can thrive and be successful, but a place that you can also fail. And I was very, very taken by that. And these people were incredible as just a support group in getting this film made. 